property so what we do today we'll discuss about vpc pairing okay so that let's discuss a small scenario <clears throat> how you can small scenario which we are discussing on the other day let's take one vpc or is to one region and <coughs> you have created vpc1 or let's take this way you have a vpc and you have another vpc or you can create three let's create three let me draw picture in a different way So let's take <coughs> you have VPC and another VPC. Can I create multiple VPCs in one region? Yes, we can. Right. <clears throat> Let me go to console. This is one right this region <coughs> i have created one vpc with the following details vpc1 10 dot 1 dot 0 dot 0 slash 16 and i have created one more vpc And let me create one more third VPC. <coughs> what is the difference between these three? Nothing. Class A, Class B, and Class C private IP address. Right? So in AWS, I can use any sort of IP address which I require. So, how to use this? So, this is class A VPC one ten dot one dot zero dot zero slash sixteen, and another one VPC two. 72.16. VPC 3. Right. <coughs> now you can create a some multiple subnets inside. Possible.
create a two two subnets, not more than that. Be the IP subnet one ten dot one dot one dot zero slash twenty four and subnet two ten dot one dot two dot zero slash twenty four and and in this what could be the subnet subnet one one seventy two dot sixteen dot one dot zero slash twenty four in this 172 16 2.0 slash 24 and the third one subnet 3 192 168 0, uh, 1.0 I'm not using 0.0, .0 anywhere if you want you can use it normally sorry subnet 1 that one subnet 2 Zero slash twenty-four. Everywhere I have skipped the G's. One of the ranges. One of the ranges. Ten dot one dot zero dot zero slash twenty-four. Another one. One seventy-two dot sixteen dot zero dot zero slash twenty-four. Another. One ninety-two one sixty-eight zero dot zero slash twenty-four. <coughs> In all the three classes, the starting IP range is this, but I have skipped this, if you observe. I have started assigning from 1. Okay, now, the reason is, you can use this as well, there is no limitation. But if I want to place any gateway devices, or if I want to place any security devices, or if I want to place any uh, scanners or internal infra related stuff not against the security related stuff so I'll put all these things in this range so that it is easy for me to manage the customer in environment in short this I will use it for gateway subnet okay so let's keep aside. So what we need to do? We need, <coughs> we need to deploy two machines here, and obviously they both can talk to each other, right? Internally, and I need to deploy two more machines here. two more machines in each VPC you have two two VMs and they are able to communicate with each other internally right possible Linux Linux all are Linux let's say these two I'll put it on Windows and Linux because Linux is easy for me to deploy, it will take hardly two minutes. For Windows, I need to wait for at least, uh, you can say, <clears throat> four or five minutes for each server. So we can we can complete the testing faster. Now, let me decide static IPs for everything. Static IPs for everything. I don't want to use dynamic IPs, static IPs. So in VPC1, subnet 1, Linux machine is there, right? For that, IP is 10.1.1.50. And VPC1, subnet 2, 
another Linux machine is there, right? So for that, 10.1.2.0.50. Clear? VPC2. One seventy two dot sixteen Understand what I'm trying to one ninety two one sixty eight. You say three. VPC three. This is Windows Server. Clear all the six servers and the six IPs. I want to assign it manually. Let's see how we can assign it. <laughs> Done. So now the aim is if I want to ping, aim is I want to ping. 10.1.1.50 to 192.168.2.50 this is and this these two machines I want to ping so what you have normally in each VPC, you will have your what is this internet gateway, right? And if you want to send your traffic out, or if I'm trying to access it from internet, I'll come like this. But this machine and this machine is in the same building <coughs> or in the same region. But you are saying if I want to send some data, you should send like this means you are trying to call okay uh, let's say scenario like this so example you have a home and two floors okay and you're staying at first down, downstairs and upstairs some of your family member is staying okay and you imagine previous landline connections you have a two landline connections okay now you are sending data to exchange and dialing back to do you think it is required unless until you both fight otherwise you can simply shout it right okay so here also both both the machines are on the same building or on the same region you should establish some internal connectivity between the VPC <coughs> right you should establish some internal connectivity between the VPC so that you no need to send the data to internet and come back so how to how to avoid that by using VPC pairing by using VPC peering, you can establish a connectivity between two VPCs in one region and across the region as well. Means if I have one more region in UK, and one more VPC, one more subnet, 
and one more VM, right? So from this VPC to this VPC, I can establish the pairing. That we will do tomorrow. But for now, we will test this and see how it works. Okay, clear? So let me go ahead and build the lab. Go to UPC. Nothing. <coughs> Your VPCs. VPC one. Ten dot one dot zero dot zero slash sixteen. Right. One one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot zero slash sixteen what is the third one one ninety two one sixty eight done all the three VPC so each one edit DNS host names Otherwise, you will not get the complete host name. You will have to end up with IPs. Done. Now go to subnets, create VPC1 underscore subnet1. Select VPC1. Careful, okay? And if you want to place the resources in availability zone you can place it and we want to 10 dot 1 dot 1 dot 0 slash 24 is the subnet ip <coughs> create subnet 2 vpc1 subnet 2 2 dot 0 slash 24 VPC2 subnet 1 VPC2 172 16 1.0 right subnet 2 <coughs> under VPC 172.16.2.0.24 Done. So, VPC3 subnet 1 192.168.1.0 under VPC3 clear VPCs and their subnets <coughs> excuse me yeah in each subnet you see around 251 IP addresses you will get now go to, <coughs> go to route tables by default, you will see three route tables has been created. I don't want to use it. We will create manual route tables later on. But meanwhile, let me create Internet Gateway. VPC1, Internet Gateway1. VPC2, Internet Gateway2. Right, for each and every VPC, 
I have created three internet gateways. Let me attach VPC to each VPC. So if you don't attach it, you will not be able to send the traffic out from the VPC. Then now go back to route tables, create VPC1 route table 1. VPC2 route table 2. Three, route table three. Three different route tables manually created and leave about the default ones, main ones. Okay. So select the route table, go to subnet associations, edit. So which subnet we should use? Yes. Use two subnets associated. <coughs> and route. I'll say everything I want to route it to Internet Gateway, which is in VPC one, every all the traffic is being routed to from these two subnets. Everything is routed to from these two subnets. Everything is routed to Internet Gateway one, Internet Gateway two, Internet Gateway three. Right. So let me do the same for rest of the VPC. It slash zero means everything internet gateway save third one everything I'll route it to third gateway subnet associations done so done with the route tables what next security groups you will see three security groups by default has been created vpc1 security group 1 for vpc PC1 security group one. under VPC two. PC2 Security Group 3 PPC3 On all the subnets, I'll say inbound roles and ICMP what else SSH 
SSH. <clears throat> Anybody logged in from laptop? Everyone, right? Uh, just go to browser. Just type what is my IP. So you will get some IP. Can you ping that IP, please? Because I want to allow you people to access it. At least one or two people, please ping me. Madhuri, go to browser and just type what is my IP. Okay, just give me at least one. I'll use, okay. So, right? Open. No, 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 not the IPv6. Not the IPv6. I need IPv4. Tushar, I got it. So, Tushar, I'll give you access in VPC2. Okay, in VPC1, inbound roles. Only SSH. SSH. My IP as well. I said I have provided access to myself and Madhuri. In VPC2, edit for my IP. And this is the Shah's IP. Okay. So he <coughs> he has access to VPC two only. Now. Type this. I'll show you. Just type this. You get IPv4 or go to any site. What is my IP.com? You should get both. Okay. Ping me that IP. Meanwhile, what I'll do for VPC3. Remember, VPC3 has two things. What are all those? Hmm? VPC. Anywhere. And um, I said I want to place Windows Server as well. So for the Windows Server, I'll say my IP and I need to show your IP here. Not getting? Yeah, actually when I'm typing it is giving this IP address only. Go to that site, you will see V4. Connected from mobile? 
Yes. Still, you will get that V4 IP. You go to this side, you will get two IPs. Yeah, got it, got it. I have been that to the four address. Yeah. So I took this much time just to get the IP. Okay. So you can only RDP from VPC3. That's it. So this is the these are the rules. A set who can access from where and how you can control it. Done? Done with the networking part. So let me go to EC2. Okay. So minimize this. I want to see if I have the key or not. Yes. Rebellious March 20. Fine. So you people cannot access the machine until unless I share that key but what I'll, what you have to do is you, you can try accessing the machine you should get the prompt right so go to instances how many instances I require here in this picture I need six instances in each subnet so launch so let me take this one general purpose one instance in VPC one subnet one I need public IP as well as scroll down what is a private IP give the private IP. so you can assign static IP or you can assign man manually what, what is the IP that you want to reserve it or, because if you don't assign it here system will assign automatic private IP but I, I don't want to use that right next 8 GB storage no tags nothing VPC you'll see only VPC one review launch same key pair done one instance is deployed let me launch the second one vpc1 careful submit to need a public ip what is the private ip is the private if you made a mistake then it will be a mess yes, same key pair done <coughs> two machines in first VPC Let me deploy another two machines in second subnet. VPC2, subnet 1, public IP. Right? VPC2. Security group 2. Launch. Same key pair. So, let's refresh. I have 
three instances. Apply fourth one. Now you will see multiple instances I'm deploying. So the free tier, what we are using, one machine for one month is free, right? So now you're deploying six machines. Okay. So the number of hours will reduce as per the calculation. <coughs> And fourth server is deployed. Okay. Launch. Fifth machine in VPC three. Subnet one. Public IP. Five servers which are up and running. Let me deploy the sixth machine is Windows one. Right? VPC three subnet two need a public IP and what is the private IP? This one. So view instances, you will see six instances of that are up and running. It is hard to remember or hard to identify which which instance is running on which. On which VPC. So is there any way? private IP address right alarm status not required IPv6 is not required launch time is not required okay and close you will see private IP private IP for each machine so I have VPC VPC 1 VPC 1 2 2 3 3 these are the security groups and this is the private IP groups. fine so VM 1 if you want to assign some names VM2 3 otherwise this is Windows 1 last one right so how to access it so first VPC VM1 what is the public IP or name this one so first VPC I'm just pinging on the chat this one machine one Linux machine and if you look at the IP private IP is what I have assigned and public IP you automatically get the public IP when the system is assigned how to access this I will go to 
property ac2 hyphen user right the host name i need a key this one also what i will do it is hard to remember the visible this is first machine and madhuri and other people you can try it try to connect it to this instance you don't have the key that's fine but you should get that prompt which prompt let me show you once again let me copy the second one and take the if i take it see at least you should get this prompt if you get this prompt means server is reachable so if you all three can try only madhuri should get this output rest other two you will get a timeout check it out if you want quickly No. Okay. So ping. Ten dot one dot two dot fifty. Working. Ping. Ten dot one dot one dot. It's working. Both the servers. Both are in same VPC. You can unmute and talk. It's it's. You got the prompt. Others. Hello. I got that uh, security alert. Yeah, you got the security alert, right? Rest, rest, should, rest, people, rest of the people should not get the same. For others, it should not work. Right. So let's keep this aside. Now, what is next? Go to VPC2. So for this server, Tushar, you should get the response. You can try, it should work for you. Okay, this is second one. New instance. Have you got the output? Uh, or have you got the prompt? Background. 50. And... Ok, 
É, remota servers. If you can ping one seventy two dot sixteen dot two dot fifty. Not fifty. Sorry. Okay. But ping ten dot one dot one dot fifty. No, it's not pinging because it is from different VPC. That is the reason why I gave the color code as well. Okay, it is easy to understand. These two will never ping by default. Similarly, the third one. Third subnet or a third VPC, sorry, and copy as if you try it, you should not get any output because Linux server is not allowed to access. I gave you access on only Windows machine. So let me log into the Linux machine first. Okay, this is one Linux machine. The last one is Windows Server. So Windows Server, how to access? Okay, now this server, this is a Windows Server. Let me go to action it and downloads, decrypt the password, copy and this is the password for my Linux server, sorry, Windows server. STSC. This is a Windows server. You can try, right? You can try accessing this server. You should get the prompt. It should ask for username and password. For others, you, you should get a timeout. Right? me it's working for others it should not work only you should get the prompt only on Windows server not even Linux server test it quickly I'm sorry can you just ping me the IP again I ping the host name on the chat you can go to chat and okay Okay, so inside the machine, open the command prompt, ping 192.168.1.50. Okay, what is the IP for this? IP config, oh my god, IP config. We have a static IP, right? 2.50. This is what the IP I have assigned. Right. If you want to check, you can assign same static IP. How to assign? Ninety two one sixty eight two dot fifty one ninety two one sixty eight two dot one. What is the DNS? One ninety two one sixty eight zero dot two. Right <coughs> now, you'll see it get disconnected and reconnected. Got disconnected. You should reconnect in some time. 
Got it? I connected. This time it's complete static IP. So even if you reboot the server, this IP will never change. Done. Close. Okay. Now from this server, ping 10.1.1.50. That is the aim. Well, where is the server located? Just close it, go to picture. So, this IP is 192.168.2.50. And this IP is, sorry, this machine IP is. Ten dot one dot one dot fifty. So normally, if you want to access this machine, you can access via like this. How to take the public IP of this machine? What is the public IP of VM one? Go to VM one public IP. Go inside. Okay. So let me program files. Hmm. Let me copy this. And I need the key as well. Go to downloads and get the key. I'll put it here. So from this server, what is the username? EC2 hyphen user. The rate. What is the IP or a host name of this machine? VM1. I'm talking about. This is VM1 in VPC1. I'm accessing on VPC3 machine. And I'll say. Remember the red color is from public IP. So what is the key? The same key I'll use. Login. It is not allowing. It is not allowing. Can you tell me the reason? Can you tell me the reason? Uh, <coughs> Allow to put to put the port. Sorry? We need to allow port. Okay, so we need to allow the what is the public IP? That 3.80.106.54. Okay, so let me go to This is the public IP, right? For this machine. Copy this IP and go to EC VPC Security Groups Security Group 1 Inbound Rules, Edit Rules Add a Rule SSH to custom VPC3 Windows machine over internet, right? Now SSH save. Something wrong. Let's see. Edit rules. SSH custom. 
vpc3 windows machine for internet done now restart it see it's working now you are able to access the vpc1 machine but how you are accessing data is traveling over the internet and it is coming like this so able to access it but I don't want to use that I want to use this channel the private link right over the private IP I want to access it internally how to do that let's see so for that what we have to do we have to establish a pairing give me a minute i'll put a message in other group because we got delayed Okay, so how to establish the pairing? Go to pairing connections in VPC. Pairing connections, create a pairing connection. VPC 1, 2, VPC 3, right? 1, 2, 3. Requester VPC1 within my account, same region with VPC3. Create a pairing connection. Done. Now you'll see pending acceptance. Pending acceptance where you have to. Accept request is close. So connection has been established between 10 dot series and 192 dot series means VPC1 and VPC3. Let me go back and see still it is not pinging. If a private connection is established so you should see this ping should work right okay or else you come here ping 192 168 1.50 it should also ping still not pinging what you have to do you have to go to route table route table 1 go to routes add routes One ninety two, one sixty eight. Sorry, two two dot. If you are sending traffic to this range, please don't send to Internet Gateway. Send it to peering connection, which is one two three. Safe. Close, and from here. Edit routes. If you are sending traffic to 10 dot 1 dot, please don't send it to anywhere. Send it to peering connection 1 to 3. So now go back and see ping is started. And go back and see ping is started from both the sides. Now you access the Windows machine, sorry, Linux machine. What is the IP? 10.1.1.50 EC2 hyphen user android over private IP. It is now connecting.
again you will get a timeout the reason again security grip is not allowed for private IP see timeout now again I need to go back security groups in security group one edit one more SSH rule system 192 168 from this series pc 3 over private connection right now this time it is private connection save it close close this just restart once again see it's working now logged in over the private connection this is same server this red one same server over the public internet and this is same server over the private connection both are working but which one is recommended private connection is recommended because of security reasons understand what we did so far any questions up to this Any questions up to this, what we tested today? No, first I will, uh, once again, I will review this whole session and then I will inform you. Yeah, just practice it once. I will understand something. Madhuri? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, how many uh, VPCs we can create? Is there any limit for this or? Uh, based on your business requirement, normally I, I believe 10 VPCs we can create within the region. That is the soft limit what they set in our accounts. Okay. okay. But, but you can always request them to enable more number of VPCs. It's all just uh, boundary, I'll say. Logical okay. boundary they will mention for each and every individual uh, user account. But you can always okay. request for more VPCs. Yeah, okay, okay. Thanks. Right. So, any other questions? Are good to close. Okay. So, once practice is done, okay, don't forget to delete. Go to EC2. First, go to EC2 instances. Select all. Right. Eliminate all the. Machine. See, all machines gone. See, everything is disconnected. Once you terminated, and now go back to VPC. You have three VPCs, right? So Cannot delete all at once. Select delete VPC. No, oh, it is still peering connection is still holding. Okay, you need to remove the peering connection. Delete second VPC. We don't have any peering connection. You can straight away delete it. Done. And for the first and third VPC, go to peering connection. Delete the peering connection. Oh, sorry. Route tables. Okay, route table. You need to delete the route table manually. Edit. Black hole means lost the destination. Now delete. How come? Rotable association is deleted, right? Let 
let me see failing connections okay now allowing it to delete then so once you deleted everything make sure you don't have any elastic IPs hanging here so it should be empty if you leave the elastic somehow if you leave the elastic IPs here so it they will start charging you more On, everything is gone now go to ec2 once again nothing running instances only one key pair is there it's fine okay so please make sure you delete everything otherwise at the end you will see the monthly bill will be in thousands okay so let me stop here we'll catch up tomorrow for further further testing Thank you.